Guys, welcome to the game eight in the Kasparov versus Anna 1995 match played in um, 1995. Yeah, <laughs> so I mentioned that earlier. This is the game eight. Let's dive right into it and see the beauty the game has to offer. In this particular round, we have e4 by Gary Kasparov. Um, Anand played e5, 9 to f3, 96. We have d4. 1 ticks on d4, 9 ticks on d4, 9 to f6. In this position here, um, there can be a defense with the knight. There can be a defense with this pawn. There can also be an active move with um, bishop moving over to um, g5, you know. However, in this particular round 8, Gary Kasparov chose to switch things up a little by applying heat. <laughs> the heat came in after 9 takes 9. So, pawn takes on c6, e5 followed. You see? Aggressive. Queen to e7. For those of you asking, look, look, look at this. For those of you asking, look at this. The pawn cannot take the knight because the pawn is now pinned to the king. We call this an absolute pin because this pawn cannot go the other way. He has to just maintain movement on this file. Get it in. So, after this particular move, which the queen came in, Pinning the pawn, queen to e2. This unpins this pawn. This pawn can now take the knight. That moves Vishwanathan Anand to play knight to d5. c4 attacking the knight. Aggressive. Bishop goes to a6. <laughs> These are aggressive moves. In this position, why not take the knight away? The point of bishop to a6 is to develop a minor piece, put pressure on this pawn. Pawn takes now, bishop takes the queen. Simple. So we must also see this in our games to learn and become better chess players. This is needed. Creativity and iconic ideas. So, b3 followed defending the pawn, g5. g5 is not offering a pawn here. The pawn is defended by the queen, so bishop cannot take it. Bishop to a3 comes up. Defended by the knight came to attack the queen. Wow. Here, d6 blocking. So, pawn takes on d6. Queen takes on e2 check. Bishop takes on e2. Bishop to g7. A nice move. Attacking the rook here on a1. The bishop is now very strong on that diagonal. So, here, after this capture, um, allowing the pawn to take the knight because there is a greater piece to be captured, which is the rook. Bishop takes the bishop on e2 first, since that bishop was hanging. King takes here. Bishop takes the rook on e1. Rook moves to c1. Now, trying to support one of these pawns to become a queen. This is an idea you should learn from. In this position, it is possible to take this pawn. But well, this happens, you know. This will happen anyway. Let's see, let's start from here. This would happen, threatening to bring in uh, a queen with this pawn and is defended by the bishop. Well, let's look at the variation the engine has to offer us. Let's say, after this move, let's do this. Let's do this. Rook takes on c7. So after a move like this, wow, this 7 is coming, 9 to c3 is coming, hmm. this 7 opens this attack, so possibly rook to bishop to e5, as what the engine is saying, going after this man, well, 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 rook to c5. This pawn might fall. Okay. Well, that's enough from engine. Actually, we have seen enough. In this position, what did Anand play? Anand chose to play um, alongside castling. Very nice. You know, it's an idea. Keeping an eye on this pawn and also preparing to support in defending against these two strong pawns. They are not too strong, but they can cause havoc. After rook takes the rook on c6, this pins 
the pawn to the king. The move like this is coming. Rook takes pawn is coming. We check. Mm. Here, rook cannot take because of this bishop defends that pawn. So, rook to e8, check comes up. Attacking the king. King to d3. Rook to d7. Supporting and defending in the back rank. After knight moves to c3, uh, knight is coming to also apply pressure, increase tension on that square by moving up to b5. Attacks the pawn. From here, the knight will attack the pawn and also attack this particular pawn too. So, um, and also a reason to eliminate the knight. Uh, king takes the knight on c3. We have rook to e5 going after this pawn. From here, King defended on c4 by going to c4 actually. Rook checks, king to d3, rook to e5, king to c4, rook to e4. Here we have in the game 8 another draw. The both players agree to a draw. So starting from game 1 to game 8, we have seen draws. This was the game I thought would have. Um, provided a win and create a decisive follow-up. You know, when there's a win in a certain match, attentions deviate to one side. Is it that it deviates to the winning side or it deviates to the losing side? Most times, people believe in the two players equally until somebody wins. So, in this position, there was a draw by agreement. The game ended. Let's watch out for game 9. Game 9 is very promising. Something really happened in game 9. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can follow up with these games and more games to come.